Hello, this is Dr. Baxter from Baxter Health Center. Thank you for joining me and welcome to my webinar on vitamins and minerals to optimize your health. I think you'll find this a very informative webinar, a good use of your time. It'll really enhance your understanding of the types of nutrients that are in the foods we should be eating and how they benefit your body. There are various micronutrients in food, vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, and phytonutrients. And of these micronutrients, the category of vitamins, there are water-soluble vitamins, which are the B vitamins and vitamin C, and the fat-soluble vitamins, vitamins A, D, E, and K. Of the B vitamins, there's B1, B2, B3, B5, B6, and B12. These have other names that you may be familiar with, thiamine, riboflavin, niacin and niacinamide, panathenic acid, pyridoxine, folic acid, and cobalamin. Now, what are some of the sources you can get these vitamins in? Now, you might be inclined to take notes on this, but it gets kind of complicated, but don't take notes. Just listen to the overall information here, and I'll summarize it in a way that will make it a lot easier to deal with. Well, you get vitamin B1 from whole grains, B2 from milk and dairy, eggs and meat, green leafy vegetables, vitamin B3, niacin and niacinamide from poultry, fish, beef, peanut butter, and legumes. You get vitamin B6, pyridoxine from chicken and fish, whole grain, nuts, and legumes, and green leafy vegetables. You get folate from green leafy vegetables, oranges, and wheat germ. And you get vitamin B12 from meat, fish, poultry, eggs, dairy. Now, this is nature's proof that the vegetarians are not natural. In the natural world, without food supplements, dietary supplements like vitamin B12 tablets or injections, vegetarians would die because the only way you can get vitamin B12 is from animal sources of protein. It doesn't have to be meat, but it has to be from an animal. So it could be eggs, could be fish, could be cheese, or milk, or yogurt. Those are still animal sources of protein. But the only way to get vitamin B12 is from animal sources of protein. Again, that's nature's way of proving that vegetarianism isn't natural. In fact, I heard a joke once. Who was the first vegetarian? A bad hunter. And he died. Well, there are many differences between us in how well our bodies utilize certain vitamins. I refer to this as vitamin idiosyncrasies. For example, many people can't convert riboflavin to the form of riboflavin the body actually uses, called riboflavin 5-phosphate. Similarly, many people can't convert pyridoxine hydrochloride, the most common form of vitamin B6 found in multiple vitamins, to the metabolically active form called pyridoxal 5-phosphate. And some people can't convert the less expensive form of B12 called cyanocobalamin to the metabolically active form called methylcobalamin. In addition, 30% of us can't utilize folic acid and need a different form of folate. And this is the primary reason why even women, some women, that get plenty of folic acid in their diet, they can still give birth to children with cleft palates and spina bifida. It's because their bodies may not be able to use folic acid they need a different form of folate called 5-MTHF. So I recommend that all of my patients who are pregnant go on 5-MTHF, which is an abbreviation for a long, long chemical term called 5-methyl-tetrahydro... See, I, even I can't say it. 5-methyl-tetrahydrofolate. So it's important to use high-quality supplements that address these issues, supplements that have the metabolically active forms of these vitamins, in addition to possibly also having the less metabolically active form so that it exercises the body's conversion pathways. And that's actually how I chose the multivitamin supplement in my office that I choose to prescribe for my patients. Let's look at vitamin C. It's very important. It synthesizes collagen. That's connective tissue. 
That's the tissue used for cartilage, ligaments, and tendons. It's also the tissue the body utilizes to heal from injuries or surgery. Collagen strengthens blood vessels. It promotes healthy gums. It helps heal cuts and wounds. It strengthens the immune systems. It provides antioxidant protection and helps prevent damage by free radicals. And the best source of vitamin C is in the form of mineral ascorbates, not ascorbic acid. Most multivitamins, in fact, most vitamin C out there is comprised of ascorbic acid. These should be mineral ascorbates like calcium ascorbate, potassium ascorbate, magnesium ascorbate. This has an effect of buffering the vitamin C, which makes it less acidic, less of an irritant to the gastrointestinal tract, so you can take more of it without it loosening your stool. In addition, you get the added benefit of additional amounts of the minerals that are in the mineral ascorbate. What are some vitamin C-rich foods? Well, citrus, peppers, broccoli, cabbage, potatoes, surprisingly enough, strawberries, and tomatoes. Let's take a look at some vitamins. Fat-soluble vitamins in particular, they're found in the fats and oils of food. And because they're fat-soluble, they can be stored in the body. Now, these vitamins include vitamins A, D, E, and K. Let's take a look first at vitamin A. We need vitamin A for night vision, for growth and health of body cells, to help prevent infection. Uh, it's particularly helpful for tissues that have mucous membranes, such as in your sinuses, your mouth, and your throat. And we tend to find vitamin A in milk, cheese, butter, and eggs. Notice most of these are high-fat foods. Well, you need the fat there in order to hold on to the vitamin A. So if you go totally fat-free, you're going to be depriving yourself of some nutrients that are absolutely essential. Let's take a look at carotenoids because that's another form of vitamin A. Beta carotene is only one of over hundreds of carotenoids. Lutein and lycopene are other carotenoids. Well, most food contains mixtures of carotenoids. That's why you want to avoid single nutrient supplements. You want to use a multivitamin that has mixed carotenoids instead of just beta carotene. And these carotenoids are found in deeply colored fruits and vegetables with orange, red, deep green, purples, and blues. Again, that's why you want a variety of colors in the foods you eat because each different color has different nutrients. Reds, for example, as found in carrots, red peppers, sweet potatoes, papaya, squash, oranges, apricots, melons, and tomatoes, had a lot of lycopene, whereas dark green vegetables Kale, spinach, turnip greens, collard greens, Swiss chard, green bell peppers, romaine lettuce, and broccoli have a lot of zeaxanthin and lutein. Again, you want a broad variety of colors in the foods that you eat. Purples, blues, and reds, as found in blueberries, grapes, cherries, cranberries, plums, raspberries, strawberries, and figs, have anthocyanins, proanthocyanins, resveratrol, and ellagic acid. These are all antioxidants anti-aging nutrients, anti-cancer nutrients. You need a lot of different colors to get the broad variety of these nutrients that your body needs to maintain health. Now let's take a look at vitamin E. Vitamin E is also a fat-soluble antioxidant, and you find it in oils, nuts and nut butters, wheat germ and whole grains, and dietary supplements too, but you want the dietary supplements to have mixed tocopherols not just alpha tocopherol or D-alpha tocopherol. Vitamin D is also fat-soluble and promotes healthy bones and reduces 10 different cancers if it's in high enough levels in your body. There's been a lot of research on vitamin D over the last 10 years, and it's one of the primary nutrients that people are deficient in. Most patients that I test on vitamin D have levels in the low 20s. And that's considered low now. It's enough to keep you from getting a bone disease, but it's not enough to keep you from getting various forms of cancer. If you maintain levels of 75, 
that decreases the risk of breast cancer and prostate cancer, for example, by 75%, just by doing that alone. And it reduces the risk of eight other cancers. It also helps prevent autoimmune disease. It improves the mood, reduces inflammation, and protects your brain from the effects of aging. A vitamin D is naturally found in egg yolks, fatty fish, and butter, milk fortified with vitamin D, but it's not found in therapeutic amounts in any of those items. Most dietary supplements have only a level that's commensurate with the recommended daily allowance, which is still set at the absurdly low level of 400 IUs per day, whereas most people need at least 12 times that much, or about 5,000 IUs a day, to be healthy. And there are different forms of vitamin D as well. There's vitamin D2 and vitamin D3. Cholecalciferol is D3. That's the healthiest form. But before anybody takes vitamin D, since you can get too much of it, you should have a lab test so we know exactly how much you currently have in your body. Then with the lab test, I'll know exactly how much to prescribe to bring your levels up to where they should be for optimal health. Vitamin K has been receiving more and more attention recently in research because it has a benefit to our cardiovascular system. It helps with blood clotting and bone health as well. And you'll find this in green leafy vegetables and cabbage. It's also produced by healthy gut bacteria. A lot of people don't have healthy gut bacteria because they've been on antibiotics numerous times. You can reestablish healthy gut bacteria by taking healthy probiotics. But that takes a lot more than just lactobacillus acidophilus, which many of you have seen in the store. A good probiotic supplement requires at least six or seven different microorganisms in order to have a healthy, balanced effect in your gut. So if you're interested in a probiotic, please talk to me about that next time you're in the office. Well, how do you get enough of all these nutrients? I I told you earlier, don't bother taking notes on which foods have which vitamins in it because I hope it's obvious to you now that what we all need is a broad variety of a lot of different types of foods and different colors. And if you eat that broad variety of different types and colors of foods, then you'll get a lot of your nutrition from the food that you eat. So how do you get enough? You need at least five or more servings of fruits and vegetables, and that should be four servings of vegetables and one of fruit. Most people emphasize the fruit, whereas they should be emphasizing the vegetables. You want a variety of colors. You want to shop frequently so the fruit and vegetables are fresh. You want to store it appropriately, again, to keep it fresh. You want to steam or saute your your vegetables, if you cook them at all, in order to preserve as much of the vitamin content as possible. And make sure you do not overcook your food. That just destroys nutrients. Now, by variety of colors, I do not mean a bowl full of M&Ms. I mean a lot of different colors of fruits and vegetables in their natural state, uncooked as much as possible. Now, what about minerals and other nutrients? Well, they have a lot of important functions in the body. They regulate fluid balance. That's the balance of water inside and outside of your cells. It helps determine whether or not you retain fluid, for example. Uh, Evidence of retaining fluid would be if your rings are hard to get off your fingers sometimes. Minerals help muscle function, help nerve function, and help keep all of our tissues healthy, particularly bones, teeth, muscle, and blood. Well, there are both major and trace minerals. The major minerals would be the ones that comprise most of the bony mass of our body calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, sodium, and potassium. And then trace minerals, including iron, selenium, zinc, copper, chromium, and manganese, and a lot of others, are necessary for maintaining healthy processes in the body. Now, some of the qualities of minerals are that they can be stored in the body. They're not affected by cooking. So you can boil fruits and vegetables to death. It will destroy all their vitamins, but the minerals will still be in there. Minerals are not affected by cooking or by light, but the form that a mineral is in substantially affects how well you can absorb it. And that's because most minerals are either in what I call a dirt form or a plant form. Plants are designed to get their minerals from dirt, 
people are designed to get our minerals from plants. Unfortunately, most multivitamins, well, multivitamin slash mineral supplements out there utilize minerals in the dirt form. And that's because the dirt form of these minerals is more concentrated. It takes up less space. That's the only way they can put what looks like is enough in a one-a-day type vitamin. What you need is a vitamin that you need to take three or four or five or six of them a day to get enough of the different minerals because that means that they're using a bulkier plant form of these minerals that's much more easy for your body to absorb and utilize. The multivitamin mineral supplement I carry here in the office, for example, requires that you take four of them a day, two in the morning, two in the evening. And then you get not only enough of these minerals, but you get enough of the right form of the minerals that's absorbed by your body and utilized efficiently. Well, what about calcium? Well, it helps build strong bones and teeth. It slows the rate of bone loss. It's important also for muscle contraction, including your heart, as well as nerve function. And in adequate amounts, along with a lot of other factors, it helps prevent osteoporosis when it's accompanied by other minerals. But that's, that's the rub right there. That's the catch. Calcium has to be accompanied by other minerals in order for the body to turn it into bone. It needs adequate potassium and magnesium and manganese and vanadium and boron. And so the bone-building formulas I carry here in the office have these other minerals in them. They're not just calcium supplements. I do not believe in just calcium supplements. They don't work to build bone efficiently. What are some foods that you can find calcium in? Well, dairy, some dark greens like Swiss chard and broccoli, fish with edible bones like sardines, like kippered herring, calcium-fortified soy milk, tofu, which is made from soybeans, processed with calcium, Corn tortillas have a lot of calcium in it, but they tend to be high glycemic, so we tend to want to shy away from those. And certain calcium-fortified foods as well. Phosphorus is also necessary for strong bones and teeth. It's essential for energy production, and it's a structural part of many cells. What are some of the food sources you get it in? Well, protein-rich foods, eggs, poultry, fish, meat, milk, nuts. Most people eat enough of those foods, they don't need to take a phosphorus supplement. Well, what about magnesium? Over 300 different enzymes in the body use magnesium. Without magnesium, your body couldn't live. You find it in legumes and nuts, whole grains, and green leafy vegetables, especially parsley. One thing I do if I'm eating out and they serve a little parsley on the plate as a garnish, I always eat it, knowing that it has a lot of magnesium in it. Potassium is necessary for maintaining adequate fluid balance inside and outside of your cells. It helps to normalize blood pressure. And you'll find high amounts of potassium in fruits, vegetables, meat, poultry, fish, and milk. A lot of people think that bananas are the best source of potassium. And they may well be, but bananas are also high glycemic, which means they're high in sugar that goes into the bloodstream too fast. So you do not want to eat a lot of bananas as a source of potassium generally. You want to focus on a lot of other fruits that have more fiber than bananas do, as well as vegetables, meat, poultry, fish, and milk. Sodium is necessary. It regulates fluid balance in the body. We need it for nerve and muscle balance, for regulating blood pressure as well. Now, most processed foods have a lot of sodium, and we want to avoid that. But we want to use foods that are healthy for us and still have adequate but not too much sodium. As I mentioned before, real salt is a good source of these beneficial trace minerals. It still has some sodium in it, but it's in balance with the other minerals. And that's the key to a lot of aspects of health, balance. Iron, as you know, is a component of hemoglobin, which is the part of red blood cells that transports oxygen. So if you don't have enough iron in your system, you become anemic and that impacts your body's ability to carry oxygen to your cells. That, of course, lowers your energy and creates all sorts of other problems, too. What are some of the best food sources of iron? Well, animal foods, meat, poultry, fish, 
and green leafy vegetables. Vitamin C, found in those same green leafy vegetables, helps absorb the iron from the plants. Keep in mind, however, that iron impairs the absorption of certain B vitamins. So if you're taking an iron supplement, you need to make sure that you take it at a different time away from your B vitamins or your multivitamins. Take iron all by itself to make sure it doesn't interfere with absorption of any of the B vitamins. Most supplemental forms of iron cause constipation. However, iron glycinate does not. That's the form I carry here in the office. So the last thing you want to worry about is getting constipated by taking nutrition. Selenium is a very important trace mineral. It works together with vitamin E as an antioxidant. It has anti-aging functions. It supports thyroid function, promotes healthy detoxification, and is found in seafood, chicken, whole grains. Uh, most dietary supplements have about 200 micrograms per day. You can get too much of a good thing, so you want to keep that in the range of 200 micrograms. Zinc enhances immune function, cellular growth and repair. It helps in the metabolism of protein, carbohydrate, and fat. You really can't do without it, and most people are deficient in zinc. It also helps protect us from heavy metal poisoning. We find zinc in meat, seafood, and particularly in pumpkin seeds. When I practiced in Half Moon Bay, California, our community had a high percentage of Portuguese, and pumpkin seeds are an important part of their diet. Half Moon Bay, as you probably do not know, is the western pumpkin-growing capital of the country. And in the fall, you drive past the hills of Half Moon Bay, and you'll see they're just covered in this beautiful orange color. That orange is pumpkins. Well, the farmers will sell as many pumpkins as they can for jack-o'-lanterns for Halloween, and they'll still have a lot of pumpkins left in the field. They then let the local Portuguese population come into their fields for free, cut open the pumpkins, and scoop out all the pumpkin seeds. And they have five-gallon bucket after five-gallon bucket full of pumpkin seeds. They take back to their car and take them home, and they clean them, wash them, and dry them, and use them throughout the year. Well, it turns out that Portuguese men have one of the lowest incidences of prostate disease in the world, and that's because of the high zinc content of pumpkin seeds and how healthy zinc is for the prostate. Chromium is expensive extremely important in helping to balance blood sugar. It's part of the insulin molecule the pancreas makes. It's also part of the structure of the pancreas itself. Processed foods tend to be low in chromium, and you need more chromium when you eat processed foods. The best food sources of, of chromium are brewer's yeast, which doesn't give you an excuse to go out and drink a bunch of beer, but to use a brewer's yeast nutritional supplement would be a perfectly acceptable way of getting that. Whole grains and nuts and seeds. It's easier to absorb chromium when you have vitamin C in your diet too. And there's some excellent chromium supplements out there. Well, here's some more minerals, molybdenum, vanadium, and boron. These are very essential in order for the body to properly utilize calcium and phosphorus to make bones. And there are other conditionally essential nutrients such as coenzyme Q10, alpha lipoic acid, conjugated linoleic acid, and EPA, DHA. Let's take a look at each one of these separately. Coenzyme Q10 or CoQ10 is needed for cellular energy production. It actually helps transport oxygen inside of the cells. It's necessary for cardiovascular health, so it's of a particular concern that statin drugs, which lower cholesterol, usually lower CoQ10 levels. So whereas they lower cholesterol, supposedly providing decreased risk for cardiovascular disease, they deplete the body of CoQ10, increasing the risk of cardiovascular disease. That's why many studies show that for people that have never had a heart attack, taking statin drugs to lower cholesterol does not decrease the risk of their first heart attack. 
it seems to be of value for people who have already had a heart attack in preventing a second heart attack, but it does not seem to reduce the risk of the first heart attack for those who haven't already had one. CoQ10 is also an antioxidant, and it helps keep your vitamin E levels up. So it's synergistic with vitamin E. Alpha-lipoic acid is a very potent antioxidant. It works with vitamin E, C, and CoQ10. It helps support normal glucose use by improving insulin sensitivity. In fact, I've had patients who are diabetics who I've placed on alpha-lipoic acid, and it's enabled them to greatly decrease their diabetic medication and in some cases even go off of it. Diabetics have to be very careful, though. They have to be monitored. Their blood sugar levels have to be monitored very frequently during the first few days of taking alpha-lipoic acid because it can help their diabetic medication work so efficiently that what used to be enough diabetic medication is now too much, and it can drive their blood sugar so low it can be dangerous. So if you're diabetic, please do not go on alpha-lipoic acid without first consulting with me or your medical physician first. In addition, alpha-lipoic acid can be taken with another substance called acetyl-L-carnitine, and together they enhance cellular energy and they enable the body to reverse peripheral neuropathy. And that's chronic pain at the extremities that oftentimes occurs as a result of diabetes. So if you, a friend or a loved one, has peripheral neuropathy, please give me a call so I can uh, work with you to help address that issue effectively with alpha-lipoic acid and acetyl-L-carnitine. Conjugated linoleic acid, or CLA, helps support glucose and fat metabolism and improves insulin sensitivity. And many people can only lose fat if they supplement a diet with CLA. You'll normally find it in dairy products and certain dietary supplements as well. EPA and DHA are the two ingredients in refined fish oil that are most beneficial. They're in the omega-3 fatty acid family, and they're very effective at reducing triglycerides, improving metabolic balance by decreasing insulin resistance, helping to reduce the risk of diabetes. They help reduce blood pressure, they reduce cancer risk, and they improve brain and nervous system health as well. It's important to get EPA and DHA not from just a fish oil supplement, but from a refined, purified fish oil supplement because fish oil can have toxins in it, toxins like PCBs and dioxins because our oceans are polluted. And when this oil is adequately purified and concentrated, it completely eliminates any of those toxins from the fish oil. But if you take just a fish oil supplement that hasn't been adequately purified and concentrated, it may have some of those toxins in it. Here at my office, we use a very highly refined and purified and concentrated fish oil supplement that is so refined, it has virtually no fishiness to it whatsoever. So most of my patients prefer to take a liquid form rather than the capsule form so they don't have to swallow a bunch of capsules. And it has a pleasant orange flavor also. So there's no repeating, there's no burping up of the fish taste into your mouth which can be quite objectionable with some fish oil supplements. So in summary, you need to eat five or more servings of fresh fruits and vegetables every day, preferably organic. Eat whole grain, multi-grain products, raw seeds and nuts, legumes, lean grass-fed meats and wild fish, and supplement your diet with vitamin D, a good quality multivitamin mineral supplement, and purified fish oil, EPA, DHA. These are the three foundational nutritional supplements I personally take and I recommend to every single one of my patients. Well, thank you very much for joining me today. Look forward to our next webinar together. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.